to this point, we've used the compound interest formula to solve a number of problems. They involved solving for the amount A, and we rearranged the formula to solve for the principal P. Now, what if we were asked to solve for the interest rate R? In this tutorial, we'll do an example where we do solve for that interest rate R. The algebra is a tiny bit more challenging, but certainly doable. Example 2. If Carol has $5,000 to invest and is planning to have a total of $7,000 for tuition within two years, what interest rate is she looking for? In this investment, it's compounded monthly. Well, let's start by writing down our compound interest formula. A equals P1 plus R to the T. Where our compounding period is, well, we're told that it compounds monthly. So compounding period would be one month. A equals the amount at the end of the loan. And in this question, Carol is hoping to have a total of $7,000 for tuition in two years. So the amount at the end of the loan must be $7,000. Our principal is $5,000. Our interest rate, well, that's our unknown. T, well, our investment is for two years, but compounding monthly means two times 12 or 24 compound periods. Let's rearrange our formula to solve for R before we plug in our numbers. So let's put the R on the left, so switching sides. And to get the R by itself, let's start by dividing by P and cancelling. And we're left with 1 plus R to the power of T. Now, we need to get the R by itself. So how do we get rid of the T? Well, let's kind of get our head into this a little bit. So on the side here, a little reminder. If we were solving for x and we were told that x squared is 9, well, how would we get the x by itself? Well, what's the opposite of squaring? Yeah, square rooting. And if we square root both sides to keep them equal, well, the square root and the squared would cancel out. And we're left with x equals the square root of 9. What? if we're solving for x, if x to the power of 3 is 27. Again, what's the opposite of cubing something? Well, yeah, the cubed root. Again, cubing and cube rooting are opposites. They would cancel. So we're left with x on the left and the cube root of 27 on the right. So we've got our head back into solving for x when we involve powers. In the same way, back to our problem, what's the opposite of doing the power of t? Well, we would have the teeth root. And let's show that with a little t in here. And we have our cancellations. So our last step would simply be to subtract one from both sides. And it's time to plug in some numbers. We have the 24th root of 7,000 over 5,000. Now, 24th root, that seems kind of crazy. It's a huge number, but it's perfectly legitimate. Once we have that, we simply subtract 1. Our final result for R equals 0 0.0141. And converting that to a percent, move the decimal over twice, 1.41%. Now that seems awful small. So one thing to remember, normally when they ask for the interest rate, they want the annual interest rate. And remember, in our equation, the R is the interest rate per compounding period, which was, looking back, one month. So to get the annual rate to answer this, we better multiply our R by 12. Annual interest rate of 16.9%.